welcome to the Coach Tyler Show. Golazo! 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 Hello and welcome to another episode of the Coach Kyle Show. You with your host Kyle Day here. Um, I want to take this time to welcome all those that are here. And I hope that you encourage those that are not here yet um, to join us um, on this on this podcast. Remember this podcast, we um, we talk all things soccer. And in more in more cases or not, we speak to what is happening outside of the field more often than not, um, rather than what is happening on the field. Um, that approach is because um, it's important that you are not a different person when you go to the field. Uh, the person that operates off the field is the person that operates on the field. So it's like, let's say, how you do a game analysis, it always starts with preparation. So we believe if you are a quality person or you are aiming to be um, a high level player, you will be a high level person. So that's why we focus a lot on what is happening outside of the field. It's no different. I mean, this podcast, um, I try to keep it as real as possible try to be as authentic um, it, with regards to what you know you're experiencing every day and oftentimes uh, these are uh, things that are not uh, these are things that we don't talk about enough because in some cases it's it's uncomfortable and in in other cases it's it's not something that uh, we put a lot of stock in or we pay attention to. So we want to discuss money and skills and and how those two things, um, how those two things can work and how they create also uh, so many problems. Um, The objective in this podcast is to make sure you understand that repetition is the number one uh, determining factor uh, for development. Repetition is everything. Without repetition, you know, there's nothing that you can say. Um, there's no amount of money that you can pay um, that will enable you to perform the way you should perform. You know, there's there's a religious saying that money answereth all things. Money answereth all things. When it comes to soccer. Money answered a lot of things, but it don't answer all things. Um, the only thing that answer all things uh, is repetition. Um, that is my firm belief that the more the more you put in, um, the more you will get out. You know, one of the good things about money, though, because we can't uh, we can't just say that. Uh, money don't play uh, a role or a major role in 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 developing the skills or understanding how to play the game. It does. But one of the things that money can do, it offers you the process. It affords you the process um, and not necessarily results. I think sometimes we're confused with... Um, what money should do in terms of soccer because it's a pay-to-play system um, fortunately or unfortunately in, in based on your perspective and how you look at it but money can offer you the process and the process is the repetition that you can get based on the environment that you're in but money don't offer you the results it don't offer you results in soccer. You just can't pay and get the result that you want. In this case, you can't be 
at the skill level that you want to be just because you can afford it. Yeah, because if you look at soccer today and, you know, coaches are, managers are losing their job in some, some not spending a month, some not spending six months on a job because it's so result oriented. So with that being said, the pressure now will be on the players. If you want to play at the elite level, the pressure is now on you to be able to go into an environment that you're dreaming about, that you're thinking about, um, to have an impact right away. Because the manager's, the manager's job now is on the line. And this is his job. This is how he, you know, feed his family. This is how we take care of his business. So the so if you're not fully equipped with the uh, with the tools that can have an impact on now a result oriented business, then you can easily get left behind. So it's very important. Uh, for us to to understand that you know while we can pay and we can um, while we have the ability or we're blessed with the resources uh, to play and to pay and play soccer um, quote unquote in elite soccer programs as we term it it don't necessarily provide you with the skill that will elevate or will optimize your performances. I want to dive a bit deeper into this, into this, um, into this subject because I think um, there's some important things that can be shared tonight uh, that can enable you to, you know, maybe put things into perspective um, to have a better understanding of how your resources um, can work for you. And don't be left with this uh, perception just because you can afford to play in certain programs. It means that you will be, uh, you will get the tools or you will be equipped uh, with a necessary, um, with a necessary uh, behavior and attitude and habits that will enable you to go on and play at the highest level. We'll be right back. So the question is, who is KMSA? KMSA is a training academy uh, focused primarily on the development of individuals uh, based on their pathway, based on where they want to be um, in their careers. And also, um, focus a lot on young players who uh, want to be introduced to the game and players who are at the fundamental stage making sure that we are orienting and reorienting and the players on a consistent basis. Welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. You're with Coyote here. Um, if you're now coming in, we are discussing um, money and skills, how those two things um, can work together and how they would have created some uneasiness in, in terms of the development of soccer. So we obviously know that we, in, in, in this United States of America, it's a pay-to-play system. The game is still young. The game is still developing. And I think um, from, from the top, they're making the efforts. Some might have a different perspective, but taking part in in the different courses that I would have taken part in, there's obviously a um, a mindset to change um, the the perspective of the game because soccer is a business is it's an entertaining sport. People come to be entertained. I think this is why people will spend millions and millions of dollars to go and see Ronaldo or to go and see Messi because they know they will see something that will excite them, that will produce 
some amount of joy that they will be able to tell the story uh, in the future. So we know it's a business-oriented sport. So money is necessary. You need to invest if you're going to um, have any returns, if you're going to get any profits. So, but sometimes when you put the right things in the wrong hands, it creates this chaos, this misunderstanding, this dilemma that when it goes too far, it gets out of control. Now, my hope is at some point in time, if soccer could come under one banner, if soccer was to come under one banner where there's, there's a, a pathway for every single person that, or every single athlete that wants to play at the elite level, not having all these different competitions. And if you're in this competition, you think you're elite. And if you're in this competition, you think you're elite. What if it was, if, if, it, if it came down to like an England setup or a, or a Holland setup where there's a clear pathway? And if you're not on that pathway, everything you're doing is for fun. Let's think about the Sunday league. You just you just play and you drink beers. There's you you know you're not going nowhere. This is what you do for fun. This is what you do with your boys. If they create a system like that, how many of our young players who believe they are on the pathway or they are part of the developmental system, what will happen to them? That is a, I think that is a you know. A good question to ask. What, what do you guys think at home? Um, but if that was to happen, then it will come down to what is an elite player and what an elite player represents. And if that is clear, um, it's it's clear in some in some quarters, but in the grand scheme of things, it is not that clear. So let's talk about uh, the importance. Like I said, the goal here is for us to understand that repetition is the only thing that allows us to really maximize our potential. The money affords us the process. So they, they both play their part in elevating our skills. I think what has happened is people pay but not truly understanding what it takes. So there's a bit of confusion of how much you should pay and how much you should not pay. So let's look at it from the perspective of the brain. Caroline Lee said something that's very important. important. Your brain is designed to respond to your mind. So we talk about a book the other day as a mad thinker. What you feed your mind, um, you will, your brain obviously dictates whatever you do, how you think. Your brain will allow you to operate. It will create these behaviors. It will create these habits that will uh, help with your with your behavior, with your performances. This is something that is, is intrinsic. It's not something that is, is outward. Um, this is something that, in, that is intrinsic that allows you to function within the capacity of the game. So it don't matter how much money you pay. It's something that is it's happening on the inside of you that allows you to function um, based on purpose. So if you if you have a desire to be a top soccer player, right, and you have the resources, it's not the resources that allows you uh, to maximize your potential and optimize your performances. It's what you think about you on the inside. You see, I wear this shirt, dare to believe, because I firmly believe that it's what you create on the inside. 
It's what you think about yourself is what drives your development. Now, it's a good shirt for you to keep close to you, for you to work out. So if you're interested in, 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 in this shirt and you want to use it as a motivation, you could use um, the information running um, along the screen. But it's, it's very important that you understand that because oftentimes the external thing, which I will use as the money, disrupts the developmental process when it relates to the skills. So if the focus is on the outward thing and it's not on the intrinsic thing, it can disrupt the flow of development. Because it's one thing when you, you know, what I've seen in many environment is when you give something, you want something back right away. Is this instant gratification? Is this left side of the brain behavior? You, you want to see progress now because you would have paid. So if you, if you focus on just the money you would have paid, it can easily disrupt the process in which the money should afford you. That's why I start off by saying that money affords you the process, not necessarily the results. You know, money is not able to buy you skills. It just offers you the process. Um, to play at the highest level, you know, if, if, that, if money could only offer you the process, if it, can, if it can offer you the skill to play at the highest level, for me, I probably would, I probably would never get there. Oh wait, maybe it makes me sound like a, like a victim because I was lacking resources. But anyway, you know, there's so many stories like my story, like people who come from not so much money. But let's say that was the number one determinant of you being at a level that you desire to be. Then there are many people like me who grew up in, 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 a, in a certain environment would not, had, would not have had the chance to play at an international level or a professional level. Because to be honest, is some people's reality. But if you're fortunate enough, if you're fortunate enough to have the resources, because I believe it's a blessing, it is not a curse to have resources, to have money, um, to have a decent income. It's, it's, not, it's not a curse, it's a blessing. If you can use that to drive the repetitive action that is needed to develop the skill, then you're onto something. You see, don't matter how much money you have, right? You don't play soccer with your conscious brain. This is why repetition is important. You don't play soccer with your conscious brain because your conscious brain is too slow. Your conscious brain gives you time to process something. Somebody says something to you, you at you, let's say you're at your calm state, you will try to process, you will try to think, and you will say, give me a few minutes so that I could make a, a conscious decision. In soccer, you don't have that. I'm telling you. You see, that processing, that that consciousness you're talking about. We know it's your left side of your brain that you you use to to make certain actions, and you want to get to the point. You want to understand the value of what you're paying for, and all of that. It's all left side brain. In soccer, you're not using that. It's actually where ten percent of our our mind functions and study would have shown with the with that left side of the brain or the consciousness of the brain trying to play soccer you only make about two thousand 
actions per second. Maybe that might that might sound great, might sound a lot, but those actions are controlled actions. And if we relate it to the game, it's like a free kick. It's like a throw-in. It's like a set play where you get a chance to set up and organize and do all of those things. But this is why we, we need repetition. And this is why money affords you the process. And that process is moving you from where you are to where you need to be. So it needs repetition. It's not a control, it's not a control, it's not a control action. You can't say I should be at this point. You could have a goal, but a goal don't. A goal don't define your potential. Because if you reach a goal, you could think that's all there is. But nobody could really justify your ability but the creator. So it's okay to set goals and, and get to it, but there's something above those goals that if you keep pushing yourself, you can go past that. So those control those control actions, um, it limits your ability. It limits you playing at the highest level because it's more, to play at the highest level is more about skill. Skill reaches the unconscious competence. So, Let's go again. You pay money for the process. You allow the process to happen with repetitive actions. It creates this unconscious competence. Understand that fact. This is where the brain processes information 400 billion actions per second. So you are playing soccer with your unconscious brain. But there's a level of unconscious competence. That means you have done this thing so many times that it's on automatic. The brain sees it and it responds to it. Most people suffer with confidence or most people get scared because... They have never seen the action. They have, it's on familiar grounds. It's, it's not in harmony with what they are, are what they are, um, they are connected with habits. We talk about that in um, the other day, in one of our podcasts. We talk about the comfort zone. So you are trying to move from. A conscious brain, 2,000 um, 2000 actions per second to reach into 400 billion actions per second. This is the ability of the unconscious brain. The, the ability to have this autonomy in soccer. This is where the highest level of players play with. And it comes from repetition. No, we're 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 not told that in in many circles because we can't really control the end result, and that makes people very uncomfortable, especially when they pay in their hard-earned money. But I think. You know, the players who, the athletes who desire to be at that level, who have, who got that dream of playing at the elite level, you know, unfortunately, is it will be very difficult for you to get there. Because you have to be able to think at a speed that if you're not given the time to allow your brain to develop that, it's going to be very difficult. So our monies 
must be used to afford us the process to allow repetition to occur to move the child from consciousness to unconscious competence. So none of us can truly measure that. Only the individual who is intrinsically connected to what they want to see at the end. The job of the coach and the job of the organization is to facilitate that process. It's a hard task. When you have this desire inside for, you know, for something that you really want to achieve, there's oftentimes no light at the ending of the tunnel. You have to believe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And you have to work towards that light that you believe is at the end of the tunnel. You know, I remember I tried to make a run 50-something, 50 56, close to 60 miles. Um, I was running to raise money for kids who were, um, who were suffering from HIV or they were in an environment where uh, family or somebody was suffering from HIV. I was, I was making this run to raise some money for them. And initially, I'm playing soccer, so I think I'm I'm fit. I could I could make this run. I could do it. But as I started training for this run, you know, you start hearing things on the outside, like, and you start reading, and realize that, boy, I probably doing about three or four marathon in one day. This is this this is unheard of. So then I started pre preparing my mind that, boy, listen, at some point in time, you will want to quit. What will you do? So I started on this journey and, and, and I was going good for the first five hours and I've done something that was crazy or it was not crazy. But I started the run and I decided I'm not going to drink no fluids or I'm not going to do nothing until um, after five hours. So I just was running for five hours. And the dumbest mistake I've ever made in my life. Because I said I want to test myself to see, but that test was a, was a stupid test. But I was prepared to finish that run, regardless. So I got past five hours and, and everything started going downhill. Everything. My body just started... I don't know. I just became a totally different person. But in all of that, I'm feeling, you know, I tell people like, I don't think that death got any pain. I don't know. But I have felt so much pain that pain became so numb. And I'm telling you this because how powerful the mind is and how powerful repetition is. And if you can if you can pay money to afford your athlete the opportunity to to get the repetition and not decide when the repetition should end then it's a it's a good investment regardless what the result is there's something about going after what you desire inward that changes your life holistically so I got to the point where the doctor said you should stop because you about you can pass out and die any, anyway. But in my mind, I was prepared to die. I, I wasn't worried about that. I was worried about getting to the end. And the goal was to never look back one time. To keep moving forward because if i keep moving forward each step get me closer but if i lose sight of looking forward and i start looking to the side or the back then i will be distracted 
and I would lose momentum. The other part was nobody who wanted to join and give support could come to the side of me or to the front of me because I didn't want you to dictate the pace. Sound like so many people. They have this desire to get to the end, but there's so many things around them, to the side of them, behind them, sometimes in front of them, thinking if that person running too fast in front of you, you have to speed up. If this person running to the side of you and they acting like a clown or they're not doing what they're supposed to do, you get distracted. But if you start looking back, it takes away your momentum because you're you're not now in coordination. You not you you everything is not connected and moving forward. Your head turning around, your arms not moving the same way. All of these things, but it kept me going forward. I remember that through all that pain and through all that suffering and through all, I had no fear of dying because I had a purpose for what I was doing. So while I look like that on the outside, because I look like that, I lost so, many, so much pounds. Like I was looking like a stick. You know, most people believe that I was sick. But I was, I was going to finish regardless. And I did. And I learned something that day. It don't matter where you are or you know, what you're going through in life. It means it, you have the ability to turn your situation around. All you need to do is create new habits. Think about that. We'll be right back. Coyote, McKinnon, and company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable, and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts, and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon, and company. We care. Welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. You're with Coyote here. Um, thanks for staying here with me and listening to this podcast. If you haven't shared it yet, it's a good time to share. And support the march. Um, it's We have a desire to bring opportunities to kids that might not be able to uh, afford the opportunities to truly uh, maximize their potential. Um, they might be in an unfortunate situation. You supporting um, this march can go a far way. And we thank you in advance um, for, you know, supporting supporting the KMS, KMXVI brand. Um, you could use the information um, that is running ar across the screen. Nevertheless, we're back um, with, with this very important topic money and soccer skills um yeah so money must drive money must drive uh, our ability to desire the process you know it must not be so focused on i pay so i need playing time i know you want to i know you, when you pay you you have this desire to get what you want I understand it. I understand it. To be fair to you, you're working hard. You've invested your money, and this is what you understand because this is this is what the system the system would have told you. And and some people are there just for the activities, and I get it. 
I get it. But if you have a desire to play at the elite level, you can't have that same mentality. There's a place for every single um, place for every single person. Yeah. But if you desire to be at that level, you know, that can be it. The money must not drive playing time. It must not drive, well, this group go to tournament, so I want to be there. Once again, nothing is wrong with being in a program that goes to high-level tournaments. Maybe those tournaments allow you to be scouted. You see, but you put in the, uh, the carrot before the horse. While you can be scouted in those tournaments, if you're not properly prepared, what's the purpose of going to those tournaments? So it it must not the the tournaments must not drive the investment. The club size, because you hear a lot of people say, well, this club is bigger, get a whole lot of people, so that's the best place to go. But if you look at the pyramid, the top always gets smaller. At the bottom of the pyramid, it's very wide. And in most cases, when you use the pyramid, it's always from the introduction stage. If you go higher, as you go higher, as you go more elite, it gets very, very close. So that notion that because something is big and you get a whole lot of kids, that development is happening, it's a perception. While a big club might be producing, once again, that must not drive your investment. The other thing we see a lot is what leagues are we playing in. Let me let me preference my comments to say, if the league is really good and you get quality players, it's a good place to be. Nothing is wrong in the league, but that must not that must not be the only thing that drives your investment. Because if you invest and your player and your player is not ready for that level, you will then move your player after the first three months of the league because your player will struggle to play because you invested in a league. You didn't invest it in the development of the skill to actually play and perform in the league. You've got to be careful. The money needs to drive the repetitive actions that allows the brain to develop this autonomy. So if your child is not properly evaluated before you enter into an environment that you believe will afford you the opportunity to play at the elite level, you need to rethink your, um, your actions when it comes to joining programs now if it's a community community based program and you're just there for socialization and um, community community camaraderie and um, networking and all of these things i get it but there's so many players that speak about elite and use leagues and use clubs and use all of these things but don't truly understand what what being an elite is, is the skill. It's not technique. It's not about execution. It's about decision making that, have, that allows you to be an elite player. Can you make more effective decisions more than ineffective decisions? You see, a professional is, is defined by consistency not perfection. No professional is perfect. They are just consistent. And the only reason why they're consistent because their repetitive actions have allowed them this autonomy that they can function in chaotic situations. That is what your investment. This is why we've seen a whole lot of young players jumping and electing to go abroad. You must develop this autonomy where you can make decisions in all six moments of the game. And out of those six moments, you have to control 
two controlled moments. The other moments is about quick, is about quick decision making in split seconds. Observation, processing, implementation. That's happening in quick succession. Excuse me. This is important um, to understand that. The other point that I want to make is money, when it relates to soccer skills, creates this great assumption. I assume, <laughs> I assume the money that I pay will automatically, automatically bring skills or in some corners, bring growth. That is an assumption. If I pay and I go to this program, if I pay and I go to this coach, if I pay and I go to this team, if I pay and I go to this tournament, if I pay and I pay and I pay, I will automatically develop the skills to play at the elite level or I will grow. So think about this for a second, right? Imagine going out with a boat in sea, because a lot of people, you know, have boats and they take trips and all of that stuff, right? Imagine going out to a boat to the sea without a planned destination. Yeah. If you're answering that question right now, you're correct. The wind will blow you anywhere he chooses. It's very important. So if I assume something, I'm starting on the wrong side of the fence already. Because there will be a lot of things, if true, if you don't understand, you know, and in fairness to the parents who, who invest in their kids, they're investing in the kids because they believe that's what their child wants to do. That's what they're excited about doing. And that is where it starts. That is a good idea to start. That is a good idea to invest. But it don't stop there. It don't stop there. And because oftentimes it stops there, there's a, there's a lot of assumptions about what truly allows the player to develop the skills based on the investment. Money must encourage you to be intentional. Don't be like the people going to the sea without a planned destination. You must be intentional. We cannot follow the chronological approach of aging where you know you're going to get to from one to two, God spare your life, you're going to keep moving up and moving up. Not because we, we change age automatically. We believe that this same idea goes to playing the game of soccer. Time alone will not get you better. It's what you do with that time. We will not just gain skill by the presence of money because we can we can pay and we could go to whatever club we need. And it sometimes is unfortunate that uh, because it's a pay-to-play system and there's such a struggle to get players to even play in those elite environment, sometimes you, you are there to make up numbers. You are there to make up numbers. That's the truth. We have 16 players and we want to, we have 17 players and we want to make up an 18 roster because it allows us to have the, the training that we might need to create this game, this game reality, create this reality of the game situation. That sometimes the integrity of the game is questioned. Because the presence of money.
we will not develop our soccer skills by mere accident. We cannot, we, we just can't do that. And some people will ask, well, when is the moment you think that a person should say it's time to hang it up? No, this is why I wear this shirt. This is why we promote this shirt in KMSA. This is why we, we want our athletes to wear this and maybe their parents to wear it because that decision is not based on no one else. That decision is primarily in the hands of the individual. But if you, if you will do it, it's very important that you do it without fear because it will not happen by accident. You must desire to have that skill that brings that autonomy until you believe that your time has come to an end. And sometimes, once again, money gets involved or get or interrupt that process. Money interrupts that process because parents will feel that a developmental process will cost too much holistically. And then some parents will believe that what they're paying because it's convenient and because eh, they could afford it, it's good enough. Both of those process disrupt development because the money is not to give you the result. The money is to give you the process to develop the skill. And the skill is the unconscious competence to be impactful and have an effect on the result in a high performance environment where your kids are desiring to be. You must understand that. The time has come when you need to just stop paying for the player you want to become and start being the player you want to be. Stop paying for the player you want to become because you're, you're not focusing on the process. You're focusing on the status quo. You, you're focusing on the assumptions. So start being the player you want to be through the investment of your parents. You see, one, one believe that the result will come automatically because I go here or because I do this or because I'm aligned with this coach or because I'm connected or something. The other, understand it is my desire and my efforts and my behavior that will drive what I want. And if I have the resource to do it, it puts me in a better place. We'll be right back. Hello, and welcome to another training day with Coach Kyle. I am Kyle Dean McKinnon from KMSA. In today's video, we'll look at the insight turn. As we can see in the video, athletes are first using the process of speeding up, slowing down, changing direction to be a bit more detailed look at the the base of support it's wide this increases balance the athletes are also 
very close to the ground to improve the center of gravity which increases the strength to hold off the defender. Welcome back. I hope that short video was helpful um, for you young players um, working on your um, execution. Um, maybe you could look back at this video again and you could go practice in your backyard or get to practice early and work on developing that aspect of your game. And if you do train hard and you know you you struggle to recover within your session, you should really try element. Um, this is recharge um, electrolyte drink mix, LMNT, but it's a really good product. No sugar. Um, you have different flavors here uh, to your liking. You know, it's easy, um, accessible. You know, it's it comes with a powder um, that you can add to like, you know, 30. I don't know if you can see this really well. Um, 30, 30, 16 to 32 ounces of water with this, and you're ready, you are ready to go. LMNT, element. I use it a lot because at this age, I don't like to run, run and run and do shuttles. I just do a lot of boxing which, you know, uh, you will be losing so much fluid. So using this recharges, I could, I could keep going. So try them. Um, if, you, if you want to, uh, to try this product, just check out drinklmnt.com. That is D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T.com. It's good for recharging. In, in, in your workouts, especially if you're a person that truly pushes yourself and want to be better. It's very important to, to use whatever you can based on what is happening in the game. Whatever you can do to enhance your performance and be ahead of the game, psh, why not? So be sure to check out this product. Um, it, it's, it's cost effective. You know, I know we like economics. And, you know, we like to make sure that we're spending our money uh, wisely. So try them out. Try them out. Look at it. L-M-N-T. No sugar, no gluten, nothing. It's, it's just pure, you know. It gives you what you need. So try them out. Nevertheless, we're about to bring the curtains down on, 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 this, on this show. I hope what was said uh, was helpful in terms of you know how you how you can connect your money um, with developing um, the right skill to be an elite player, and one of the things I hope that you get is repetition. Repetition is what allows you that ability to optimize your performances. And I will leave you with this: John Wooden, um, John Wooden said, "We know the great coach." John Wooden, who responsible for a lot of the methods that we use today, or um, who was very successful at, at, at this thing. He said, but I need good players to be a good coach. That's one of the things he said. But success, one, one of the things that he said that resonated with me is he said, success is never final. Failure is never fatal. There's more in you this is what I say when I when I listen to this that success is never final and failure is never fatal is that there's more in me than anyone on the face of this earth can comprehend. If I'm successful, that don't mean that I've maxed out. And if I fail, that don't mean I have no chance again. So at the end of the day, we control as individuals, what we can do and how far we can go. As long as you have this breath of life with you, I say keep going. Don't worry with the light at the end of the tunnel. That's a myth. You will never see it. You will never see it. You keep looking. You will never see it. We learn everything in the journey. We learn 
everything in the journey. We don't learn with the result. The result is the consequences of surviving the journey. Stay blessed and enjoy the rest of your week. Improvement is a process, not a quick fix. This December, come to KMSA Winter Supplemental, where you can learn all the principles of the four moments of the game. A wide variety of episodes are already available, chock full of incredible insight from two qualified experienced coaches. Here are some previews of eye-opening quotes. Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun, so why not name it Rec? An elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching. There's no integrity in the game. It's all about business. It's it, That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.